Dell's groundbreaking 8K monitor. The last time I checked out one of these was on a crowded show floor and to say that that one was a little pre-production would be an understatement. But Dell has been hard at work for four months on their aptly named UP321 8K and the finished product is now in our hands for evaluation as a content creation device, a content consumption device, and last but not least, we uh, might fire up some games on it. Synergy is the software that lets you share your mouse and keyboard between multiple computers. Check it out now at the link in the video description. Wait for it. Oh, that went too early. Here we go, it's alive, 8K resolution at 60 hertz. Everything about the UltraSharp UP321 is either state-of-the-art, like the aluminum build quality, hyper-thin Infinity Edge TM bezels and glass front, or it makes state-of-the-art look like an antique. The specs of this thing are absolutely unreal. It comes tuned out of the box with an individual calibration report that promises delta E values of less than two and full. Yes, 100% coverage of the Adobe RGB color space. It's got 400 nit peak brightness, which is rock solid for a non HDR panel, although a little more on that later, and a static contrast ratio of 1300 to 1, which is outstanding for an IPS panel type. But that ignores the most obvious calling card of this utterly unique product the 8K resolution 10 bit 60 hertz panel. I mean, this is so far out ahead of the curve that we don't even have a display interface that can handle it yet. Like early 4K displays with DisplayPort 1.1 inputs, it needs two connections to the computer to run at its maximum 60 hertz refresh rate. But there's a big difference. These are DisplayPort 1.4 ports. Well, hold on a minute, Linus. DP 1.2 can handle 4K 60 hertz, no problem, and 1.4 has about double that bandwidth. Why do we need two of those? Ah, <laughs> because 8K is more than twice as many pixels as 5K, four times as many as 4K, and a whopping 16 times the pixel count of 1080p. We are talking 33 megapixels, 60 times per second. And until video card makers implement DSC or display stream compression, the only way to push this many pixels is gonna be to add more cords. I have some good news too though. Dell has a lot of experience building high-end displays and it really shows. Unlike early dual input 4K monitors, there's no flakiness where half of the display looks a little different from the other half or where one side will refuse to turn on sometimes. In fact, you can even just yank out one of the cables and the only effect that you'll see is that the entire display will now be running at 30 hertz instead of 60. And from what I've seen, plugging it back in is an equally seamless transition. And all of this experience carries over to the physical design as well. In spite of the panel's weight, <laughs> heat, and power consumption characteristics, they managed an internal power supply with passive cooling and all the creature comforts that creatives are used to. Height adjustment, tilt, swivel, and even pivot are all built into a base that just exudes 
quality. And they included a vase amount for you as well. Not only that, but while you're typing or moving your mouse around, there is next to no screen wobble, which is really hard to do with a panel this heavy. The four port built-in USB hub is pretty much a bonus at this point, though if I was to criticize something, I wouldn't mind some basic built-in speakers for emergencies. Okay, enough about all of that though. Let's talk about actually using it. The first thing I wanted to do was fire up an 8K wallpaper, which believe it or not, in spite of all the advertised 8K wallpapers are pretty freaking hard to find, took me about 20 minutes. That would be a nice touch, Dell, including some like dope AF, highly detailed desktop backgrounds. Because once I got that fired up, it looked freaking amazeballs. I mean, seriously, face this close to the display and you're basically, is she naked on that balcony? No, no, she's not. But the crazy thing is that I can tell. In terms of configuration, the sweet spot for scaling seems to be in the sort of 250% range if you have pretty sharp eyes. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's really easy to get going. So let's have a look at some content creation. High DPI scaling still isn't perfect across the board on Windows 10 Creators Update, but Adobe Premiere Pro scales perfectly, looks absolutely razor sharp, and I have no complaints as far as this particular suite goes. But this is one time when being ahead of the curve has the potential to be a little bit rough because, uh, Unless you've also dropped, you know, seven plus thousand dollars on your, uh, you know, Red Rocket X accelerator card and a high-end GPU, if you're working with native 8K content, there is pretty much no way that I can see that you're going to be able to play back this kind of footage in real time anyway. Losing some of the benefit, if you're playing it back at a quarter or one-eighth resolution, of investing in an 8K display. But of course, that's only true if you're talking about the footage before you've exported it. So let's go ahead and export the footage and just watch it back. Okay, so now we're talking. This cool as a cucumber chunk of 8K footage of our DIY desk PC project, which was shot on the red Epic W with the helium sensor that Burkle set to music, looks fantastic on this display. The 8K viewing experience is unlike anything else in that you can sit as close as you want to the monitor and you still can't perceive any drawback other than that maybe it captured too many little details like specks of dust that you wouldn't have necessarily wanted to show. With that said, on the subject of drawbacks, um, all of this is if you can find any 8K content. We used our own for reasons beyond convenience. There just isn't much. But how about 8K gaming? I don't know about you guys, but for me, one of the greatest things about PC gaming is that getting a better video card and a higher resolution new monitor is a great way to breathe life into old titles, giving them a visual fidelity that not wow. even the developer would have been able to experience at the time of creating them. Unfortunately, in this case, there were some drawbacks to go along with the phenomenal image quality. I actually don't blame Dell for any of this. The input lag and pixel response times of their 8K display are about as good and feel about as good as you'd expect. But even with top of the line GTX 1080 Ti graphics cards in SLI with liquid cooling to boot, either the driver or the game engine, whoa, that was fun, seems to just choke on something all the time and crash as often as not. And this is even true for relatively lightweight titles like Team Fortress 2. So is there a customer for this thing? 
at $5,000 US dollars. Well, high-end users used to spend that kind of money on larger displays and higher resolution to increase their working space for program layouts and their canvas size for their projects. That is where legendary displays like Dell's own 3007 WFP got their popularity. Going from a 1280 by 1024 17 inch LCD, which would have been pretty typical at the time, to one of those beasts was like moving from the closet under the stairs on Privet Drive to Buckingham freaking Palace. But nowadays, you can get something the same size as this with a usable resolution for literally an order of magnitude less money. I mean, obviously it costs more than that one for something with color accuracy approaching this guy, but we're still paying a big premium for a couple of things. Number one is sharpness, though, to Dell's credit, that is a sharpness that absolutely crushes even outstanding displays like LG's Ultrafine 5K on paper. Though, in my honest opinion in person, the difference is not as noticeable as you might hope. And number two, for being the first one on the block with an 8K display. So then, especially with that last point in mind, is there a customer for this product? Well, you bet there is. Because when it comes to PCMR bragging rights, there is no limit as far as I can tell. And this is the Ultimo. Synergy is a software download that solves the problem once and for all of having two mice and two keyboards on your desk because it allows you to share one mouse and one keyboard between two or more computers. So you will never confuse which keyboard or mouse is for which ever again. They've got a basic and pro version with a one-time payment for lifetime access and the features include awesome stuff like clipboard sharing, drag and dropping files, and the ability to set up hotkeys and more. It even works cross-platform, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So use our link in the video description to get 50% off Synergy today. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that dislike button. But if you liked it, hit that like button, get subscribed. Maybe consider checking out where to buy the product we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.